So <laughs> this is a very quick presentation, like three or four slides I got. Uh, but I wanted to bring a message across. And okay, sorry. <laughs> this uh, presentation is called Digital or Dead, and the subtitle of the presentation is a holistic approach to digital transformation. And um, basically, what I want to say here. Um, we have digital transformation right now going on and it will continue going this way uh, and we as companies as individual individuals we have to adapt to this kind of new uh, new environment and um, most of the people or companies are obsessed with these tools and technologies like you know all these buzzwords we will list them as well and uh, but i think most of the people are missing the main part and this is why I call it a holistic approach. And what, what, what is it? It's the moon. Yeah, yeah it's, like. it's, a, it's a it's a full moon, right? Uh, by the way, it's my picture. <laughs> I'm a little bit into photography, and it, that I took it about two years ago. I, I had a bad lens back then, but now we'll try again when we have the next full moon. So. I see the digital transformation is more like a full moon. When it's full, when the weather is good, we see the whole moon. But actually, is it the whole moon? No, there is a backside, of it, which we don't see normally. And yeah, so in the middle there is a digital transformation, and now we got all these buzzwords which are related to this trend and to this new reality. But I don't know, maybe surprising to you, I'm not going to talk today about all this stuff. I'm very much into technology, I'm excited about it, but I think we are, with this old stuff we are missing something really very important. And <coughs> what is this picture? There you see some part of the backside of the moon shining. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, this is, a, a, is this an eclipse, there, there, there's a moon in front and the sun at mm -hmm. the end. Uh, at the back, and I, I want to sell it to you like a the back side of the moon. This is not really the back side of the moon. So this is a, like imagine this is the dark side. Of the moon. It looks cool, and uh, yeah. And what I'm really excited about to talk today is all these parts which are not seen directly, and it starts with the innovation. I think this is the most crucial part in any organization right now and will be even more important in the future and it's so much not technological but more social and i think if you got this second half of the moon in order like if you if you make it correctly then the rest is kind of given and innovation is really what every organization is trying to achieve and they hire. Well, do we have an innovation manager here? No? Yes. yes. Oh, really? Your yeah. title is Innovation Manager. Yeah, me too. Job me too. <laughs> yeah. yes. Wow, that's we cool. Have to change that, huh? <laughs> so, official sure, job title. Bad news, guys, you actually absolutely. I mean, this, this kind of title <laughs> is, is crazy. It doesn't make sense. So, there are some, some guys sitting in the department and doing the whole innovation or managing the innovation. What I believe is that innovation is actually within every single uh, one of us and just to you do you shouldn't actually foster it or like i don't know manage it or whatever you just have to go out of the way and let it flourish so you have to have this kind of environment where this innovation just happens because people are there people are thinking doing their stuff every single day and they come up with some interesting ideas some ideas how to solve current problems or maybe some vision or maybe some kind of somebody may, may discover a kind of loophole in the whole system and come up with a new product or new idea or whatever. So my message is with the, related to innovation, it's within every organization, you just have to go out of the way and let it go, let, let it uh, be prospering. Another one is the creativity. I think it's also very important uh, Oh, by the way, anyone wants to give a whatever, like any uh, question or uh, say anything related to this? As I told you, it's a, it could be as a dialogue, because when it's a monologue, it's boring. 
So if not, we were switching to the second one is uh, creativity. I'm very passionate about creativity. I consider myself a creative guy. Uh, this is not the most important thing, but I think I, actually I believe that everyone is a creative in, in its, his own or her own way. So I think like I have family and children, several, <laughs> and I see like everyone has its own character and it, it just has its own stuff which he plays with and he is a creative in its own way. So my task as a parent to discover or help to discover it and maybe let the child progress in this direction. If I mean, generally, if you enjoy to do something, if you're creative about it, if you're flourishing, uh, this is a win-win situation if you do it at your work and you're getting paid for this. This is like crazy, you know. So the challenge is to, is to find this kind of thing, what you're passionate about and do this in your daily life. Then you shouldn't work anymore because you're just doing what you what you what you like to do and getting paid as well. Not bad. So Another one. What what is what what is required to be creative? Well, what what you do whenever you are like nobody demands anything from you. What what's your hobby? What are you actually doing? What are you enjoying to do most of your time? Your free time. I think this is maybe some something some field where your creativity can be discovered. Or where are you good, like from nature, you know? You have maybe some streamings, some some kind of advantages where, you, like, most of the people are trying hard to get it, and you're like this, you know? Yeah, because you just it's just like given to you, and you enjoy to you enjoy to do this. I mean, this is like we have to discover in ourselves. There is no what 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 you enjoy to do, what 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 is going well with you, and uh, just. You know, because in the future or, and now we are coming to the world where people will not more work for money. At least not my generation, not the millennials, and not, not the next generations. Maybe some, but not. I think most of them will not. And uh, I have my own company, like for the last ten years, like a small limited liability company, software company, doing some stuff. And today, it's it's not very difficult to to create your own business with your based on your idea, maybe some. Just, just have a bunch of other people who are also excited about it. Get uh, some funding capital and just do. And you will fail, definitely. And the second time, and the five, fifth time, and maybe tenth time. But it's fun, and you will learn throughout this way to do the things. And uh, I don't. Think, I think competition to bigger companies, like all companies, not the other big companies, but people like creative people like me or you or somebody else who's just coming up with some idea how to solve the current problem in a new way, have the capacity to do, to do this and just doing it. Because we are young, we're stupid, we, are not, we don't know that this is not possible. We just try and fail and try and fail until you just succeed. And maybe you're not, you'll, you will not succeed, who knows. I, I don't, I'm not sure it's a perfect answer to your question, but just random rambling here. Let me play a little bit devil's advocate. Um, do you really think that you want to be or do do business in the field where you really feel comfortable, where you feel at home, where you where you really have fun, and what is your what you do in your spare time? Is that really the same you want to do in your business? Well, in, in the business, you will does, doesn't that kill the fun in in the fun? There will be stuff which will kill the fun. I mean, you should probably choose the direction <laughs> which you like, and. Along this way, there will be tasks which you are not enjoying to do, yeah. because it just belongs to this whole thing. But because you are so passionate about the main path where it's going, and you are kind of excelling in this direction, you will still do this. Okay. There was a speech of Steve Jobs where he, I think it was in St at Stanford. He said, "Like, re really be selective when you are choosing your field, because most of the people will not succeed there." in general in business but you have to be persistent and do it again and again and stretch it further and if you're not passionate about it if you don't love it you will just give up like normally yeah. people would do and there should be something which will drive you further okay. and uh, yeah I think somewhere there should be also your passion and creativity what you're really excited about okay okay any other questions
Then we will switch to the next point, and the next point is the status quo st strike through. <laughs> I mean, uh, don't be like, I, at least uh, as I perceived it, uh, don't be satisfied with the status quo because it was like this, and I mean, it's also applied to organization, to any organization. It was like, especially older organizations. Um, if it was like this, like 20 years uh, ago, 30 years ago, it worked. I would, like, every single time ask it again and again. Like, having these old technologies, having the different world every, every single year, is it still the, the best way to solve these problems, to address these problems? Or is there anything better right now? Can we come up with something better? And I think it was, um, yeah, it was Eric Schmidt, the back then CEO of Google, now the company is called Alphabet. He was attending a kind of conference and somebody asked him about his managers, uh, not managers, but engineers at Google. And he said like, you know, I'm always wondering about these guys. Because whenever I give any task or like we have some project going on, they always come up and say like, and ask themselves and discuss, have a discussion, like, is it still the best way to solve it, the technologies we have right now? Or is there a better, way, better way to address this kind of stuff? And having this kind of curious mind, and this kind of critical thinking, I think it's really essential, and it's very, it's very nicely comes together with innovation. Once you start to ask yourself, is it the best way? You are starting to, kind of, you are starting starting the thinking process when you think like, maybe seeking for some other best solution. And in many cases, it's not the current solution that you have right now. Any questions to this point? I mean, I mean, not not maybe asking everything like, is this table really the great table? Should I change it? I mean, there are some stuff which are not essential, but in this in the field where you you are working, this is essential to you. And this is the field where you have to ask the questions. Okay. And let's speed it up a little bit, uh, simplify, I think. And there's this uh, short word called KISS, keep it simple, stupid. And it also has to do, I just, I didn't know how to call it, so I called it simplify. But it comes to the kind of perception of your products and services by customers and by people in general. I think we should, and I see it so frequently that uh, companies, organizations, people, they keep Keep stuff complicated, unnecessarily complicated, when you can make it really simple. And I think the genius, like genius is in simplicity. If you make it generic, simple, like understandable, without when you don't have to stretch to the manual to understand how to operate it, um, I think it has something very powerful in it. And nowadays, really very smart companies, they're trying to bring this kind of products where they are very intuitive. Like companies like Amazon, they keep they they have some leadership principles, and the, the first of them is be customer obsessed. It means really be being a customer oriented and be, being very customer friendly. It means you you will deliver products which are intuitive to use and uh, actually bring the value to the customers. And what I see in many organizations, we have a situation where we mostly look at our competition. Uh, what they are doing and then adapting our services and products and not really concentrating what really matters. Hmm. So the next point is being bold, as you can probably say, <laughs> from my behavior. But, uh, you know, once you discovered something interesting, you shouldn't sit on it and be like, yeah, should I try it, should I not? Just go try it. Most probably you will fail. Or if you are really dedicated, and if you see really a vision going on somewhere in the technology, then really go for it. And this this step is frequently missing with just too many organizations. Like let's have this example of Nokia and Apple. Back then in 2007, Apple announced this uh, iPhone, and it kind of disrupted completely the business of Nokia over, over several years, not immediately. But actually, you know, Nokia was a company which was investing the most in research and development. They had, they had like thousands of different mobile phones, even with touch screen or whatever you wish. But 
but they haven't, they were not bold enough to have like the whole vision, how it will, how it will address the customer needs and what will advantage it will bring, and just go for it. They tried like small, small portions of different kind of devices, and at the end it was not enough to survive in this market. Very smoking now. And there are many, many examples like this, like we are in Germany, this is like automobile country. And companies like Volkswagen and BMW, they were trying like for decades doing electric cars and stuff like this in small portions. Then something big happened. Tesla came. Now they're catching up. <laughs> Pretty stupid if you ask. Uh, so uh, empowerment is the next point. And uh, empowerment related to our employees, like to everyone working working in corporations, in organizations, and just in smaller companies. Well, smaller companies they don't, they don't have this kind of problem very much because they are very much like success targeted and uh, goal oriented, and not so much in the political stuff. You know, in the hierarchies and processes. You know, we have this process and this process. You should comply with this and that. They are more like, does it bring value to this, co to this company? Does it achieve the goal, actually? And if you need some kind of freedom or some kind of autonomy, here you get it. Get the task done and uh, let us uh, kind of succeed. I think it's really important. And there is another point. Oh, it's not the next one. But it's about also being a co-owner of a company or product or whatever. Some companies just give some couple of stocks and say you're a co-owner. This doesn't really work very well. I think a co-owner is someone who really owns a portion of this and who can make decisions. Really, this is important because we are in many organizations we are dependent on each other, on our hierarchical structure, and uh, sometimes you just need to make decisions in the field you know good to feel like that you are contributing. Otherwise, if you, uh, you will be discouraged after several times if you ask permission every single time and if you get rejected of this permission. Critical thinking, I think it was somewhere there, which I already kind of elaborated upon, but yeah, critical thinking I think is important. It's like the challenging of the state, status quo, somehow related to it as well. Ownership culture, this is just exactly what we were talking about. This is not just a giving a, a stock or two. This is about involving this person completely in the process and letting, he, letting him or her make these decisions. Uh, I think also Steve Jobs was quoted like, you have to make professionals to decide on things, otherwise they just don't stay long. Communication is crucial. So, actually, the reason why Facebook removed all the walls and put it all the people together, and many companies are following this trend, is to encourage communication between people. Just to bring them together, where in this communication the ideas are flourishing. And I have so many examples uh, in my own experience where just somebody tells you something which maybe doesn't make much sense or the idea. Some people will say it's a stupid idea. I am very careful about ideas because even in stupid ideas, there are no stupid ideas, but some people call them, there is some grain of genius, you know, if you take it from it and develop further. You can base your ideas and this is also part of creativity. We don't steal from each other, but we kind of uh, learn from each other. Every, like everything, what I have learned in my life, it's coming from other people or partially in nature, I don't know. This is uh, just uh, taking and giving. I think this is like the whole process. Coaching. I had, by the way, I don't know, uh, if you see my, some of my other presentations, the, I had the word boss. I think it was abused many times. And um, whenever somebody says boss, I imagine that he means actually or he references to a coach. I would replace the word boss with a coach. And I think this is the right uh, way to, to be in a kind of 
this uh, structure where you have a manager, but this manager is there to empower you, to give you the tools and to support you to achieve your goals of the whole team or your personal goals. That's why this is a completely different approach. And this is also related to the status quo and to the critical thinking. So if your boss giving you an order to do something, some people will just execute it because my boss told me. A good professional would question if it still relates to our goal as a company, as a department, as a team. If it relates, perfect. If it doesn't, you should actually uh, ask yourself maybe. There is this case, you know, in America, it was uh, in a hospital. One lady had to be operated. Uh, a portion of her, you know, this part which is growing, it, stays, it starts to ache sometime and it should be removed. Nothing big, you know. So, when she woke up after the operation, surgery, she was looking at her at herself, and she discovered she has no legs. So what actually happened is they replaced they mistakenly replaced her car, medical car. And she, she they did completely different operation to her. But what is really terrible, nobody in the whole process ever questioned the signature of the main doctor of this hospital. Because they saw the signature and they said, like, yeah, she has healthy legs, looks good, but he signed it. We should do this, what he signed, actually. And this stuff, this terrible stuff shouldn't happen. I mean, this is like a crazy example here, but it's very, very visual, maybe, just to understand the idea where, why it's important. Because sometimes you work on something, like the whole team, everybody's cheering, everything is great, we are doing great. But if you don't have this critical thinking, you are not questioning if it's still great, if it's, if it's true at all. And what can happen at the end? You will land in a kind of disaster, and everybody will be uh, questioning himself, like, oh, what happened? It was so great along the whole way. I think this stupid stuff shouldn't happen. How do you avoid overthinking? What is it? How do you avoid overthinking? So critical thinking is good, but if you, <clears throat> if you do it too much... Can you think too much? Definitely. Then it's good, I think. Because, I mean, I'm still, like, let's maybe talk uh, a little bit about this whole kind of employment scheme, what we have, like eight hours a day. What do you actually do, or what you code yourself in the doing, that you actually think in this mode much longer than just eight hours a day? You know, for most of the, of the people, they just cannot turn off after work and do their stuff, completely forget about the work. If you like your work, if you love your work, what you're doing, you are pretty much the whole time in this moment. This is uh, related to many people. Some people just can perfectly turn off and do their stuff. But still, what you're taking a shower, probably you're still thinking about your project. And by the way, I, from my personal experience, the shower is the best place to get great ideas. It worked so many times so well. So I don't think that our thinking, I mean, there's this thing I called emotional intelligence. Sometimes stuff just touch you, go, go under your skin, and you keep thinking about it, even in a destructive way to yourself. This is probably where you have to stop, and you should know how to do this. Because it's just really eating you. But all other stuff, like if you're a creative person and you're thinking about your project which you're so excited about in a positive way, I don't think that you can think too much. Yeah, but it might be a question of, let's say, focusing. I mean, you were mentioning you have your own company. I'm not really sure what you're developing kind of like software. <laughs> But software, software services. It, it might be really interesting. I mean, how can you really focus on your company? How can you work, well, focus on, on the work you, you have within Siemens and how to manage all the stuff with family and yeah, yeah, everything? So question. that might be a really complex issue. Yeah, well, the family thing, we can check it right, right now. Just family happens, you know. <laughs> so we you, all should, know you should uh, move over and keep, keep doing the stuff, good stuff for your family. What about my open company? I started it 10 years 
ago when I left Siemens back then because I wanted to try something really new. I had a lot of ideas and I started to launch this company with my brother back then. And uh, it was doing really well five first years. And not, I mean, there was kind of uh, go, going down uh, the following years, but still company is a self-running company. So you shouldn't in interfere there too very much. It's just not really a cash call, but <laughs> it, it just works and it serves people. Why should mm -hmm. I close it? It takes just on, only a couple of hours from my week just to make the taxes and send them out, that's it. So I'm, I'm, I'm full-time employed at, at other bigger company right now and uh, pretty happy about uh, doing interesting stuff so far, so far. So what happened? What do you mean? <laughs> no, I mean, it was great the first five years, so what happened? Yeah, then, uh, yeah, okay, good question. Then uh, Google Play happened. Google Play. He he heard about it? Yeah, sure. Which uh, disrupted all these smaller uh, kind of wiki sites where you would exchange software and stuff like this. So you have it on your phone natively. You shouldn't go and sideload your applications and uh, can engage in a kind of so uh, community of developers and software users. So platforms like this, there were many, some, many of them, and we were targeting in, in our with our platform. The platform is called Freeware Lovers. And we were aiming more towards a wiki-like system where you can have, like, in your focus you have the community, not the software itself. And uh, this is a place where developers and software users, mobile software users, meet each other and elaborate on stuff like doing some feature requests and giving feedback and stuff like this. Okay, then the question of the business model would be quite interesting, I mean. Well, primarily yeah. advertising. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so let's touch upon the last uh, principle here. And this is a funny one because I have I heard so many times like people talking about in corporations primarily, but in also in companies, smaller companies, about the leadership teams. I know. I to me every single person is a leader in the stuff which he, he or she does. And uh, there is no such a thing as a leadership team. Team of managers, yeah, I would take it, but not, not a leadership team. It's a kind of a little bit insult to the rest of the people who are there and doing the main job. And um, it, it fits perfectly to this whole approach where you are not a, a boss, but just a coach. And you, you are more transparent, you just give the whole spectrum of stuff to your team and say like guys who is strong in which topics take your stuff and take as much as you want let's distribute it in this way not enforce something to someone because or let, like distribute it because what i see in many corporations people who are ent entitled to do something they are in most of the cases not that the pe best people to do so uh, because other stuff are more important in this kind of structures, like connections or like the, the, the uh, task is cool and trendy, let's take it. But who is questioning what 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 are your best like best skills? Does does they they fit, fit to this kind of task? This is not the main question most of the times. So as a result, we have structures where people do stuff because they're cool, but not because they like them or they enjoy to do them. Because they paid well, but not because they're passionate about it. And now afterwards they start 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 to hedge their field. Like this is my field, don't touch it, don't touch it. It doesn't work because in an open system somebody from a completely different department can can approach you and say, I have an idea, let's do this. Let's and be also involved in this kind of uh, process. Because this, this guy who got this task, he will always be hedging it, you know, like protecting it from, from the rest. This is how the system is being operated. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> I want to finish with this uh, quote of a Greek uh, philosopher called Heraclitus. Uh, the only thing uh, 
that is constantly changed. 